we're joined on the program by one of them. His name is Daniel uh, Boru Ejimade, who is a medical student at the Sumi State University in Ukraine. He joins us via Zoom uh, this morning. Uh, Daniel, uh, it's good to have you on the program. Let me just begin by asking how you're faring this morning. Mm, personally, <clears throat> this morning, it's, um, it's just a roller coaster of emotions because, um, like, you know, for the past few days, there has been no electricity. There's been no water. So the electricity and the water, they just came back on like yesterday or so. In my hostel, they came back like two days ago. But right now, even as the electricity is back, my hostel, we don't have water. Some hostels, they didn't have water and electricity. So they just got water and electricity back. So like someone said, like you've, you've even lost track of how many times you've baited. Sometimes you even forget about eating. Like you forget about food, basically. Supplies are running low in the supermarkets. Even to even withdraw cash, it's very hard because the ATMs are not even dispensing. So at this point, it's, you know, the, there was no panic at first because we all thought, okay, yeah, we still had the light, electricity, food supplies. So we're still like, you know, everybody was still feeling okay. But the moment the lights went out, including me, I began to panic a little bit because that's when we realized that like, this is getting real. So some people even tried heading out, but they were sent back. Some headed out successfully. So right now it's just like a roller coaster of emotions. Like I don't know, it's you know, it's conflicting emotions. You are angry because you're like, what's happening? Why are you keeping me here? At the same time, you are scared of heading out because you don't know what you will meet in the, on the road. And you're also scared of your supplies running out. So it's just a roller coaster of emotions, honestly. Well, Personally, uh, well if, if you don't mind me asking, I mean, I I, I I can only imagine. I can't you know pretend to even. Yeah understand what you're, you're talking about but this situation power outage and all is this something that ever happens or this is the first time ever this is the first time since i came to ukraine back in 2018 that we had power outage okay. so like since i've been in ukraine there has never been power outage in my hostel i can't remember when so it was should i say it was new to us so power outage what water issues too, the same thing. So everything just went out all at once and it was like the whole city. Well, so it's uh, was, scary. was there any, any preparation? I mean, I, I, as I said, it's an emergency situation, so no one really yeah. wanted it to happen, but was there any kind of preparation by the school, any forethought or, or foresight as to this might happen, these are the contingencies that as an institution, we should prepare for our students? Well, um, I would say the only contingency or the only plan the school had was when, um, so let me say, when like the attacks are getting close per se, like when the attacks are getting serious, each hostel has a bunker. So we head to the bunkers. So right now, once like they sound the alarm for an artillery airstrike, for example, like they just sound the alarm randomly and they tell us we head to the bunkers. So I think that's like the only so say, contingency, um, contingency plan the school had, just the bunkers. So, and you know, the thing is, students were telling, were actually telling the school that we are not, we're foreigners here, so we don't know how long this war will persist. And we don't want the situation whereby we'll be stranded here and the war has, you know, gone overboard. So, but the school kept on telling us, like, don't worry, it won't go overboard, everything is fine, this and that, that and this. But now, if you look at the situation, every single city, neighboring city around us, they've all been evacuated. Sumi City, Sumi State University students were stranded here. Like it's it's terrifying because you're talking to your friend who is in another city and he's telling you that he's already in another country at the moment. They're all praying for you. Like at the moment, the only thing that can help us here is just prayers and maybe funds because even the funds, the funds were even asking like like students are even like you know asking their parents for a fund to leave this place. So I would say the only contingency plan the school had, personally that I know of, was the bunkers which they told us that whenever we hear the alarms or the sirens, we head to the bunkers. That's the only contingency. And also they provided some food stuff, like they were able to give us food stuff. But the question is, how long will this war persist? So if you keep on giving us food stuff, like if it continues for a month, two months, three months, would you be feeding us? At the point, you, the Ukrainians, you run out of supplies also, and you also have your people to feed. Oh, clearly so, a very dicey situation, Daniel. Uh, yeah. So. 
videos surfaced and we showed some of them, you students yeah. protesting. So who was this targeted at? Was it the school authorities, the government in Sumi? Why is it difficult for you to leave? Who is holding you back, as it were? Okay, um, personally, I think the video was just targeted to like, I think I was personally, me, because I was actually in the video, I was like present in one of the, in the videos the other day, I was at the back. So th that video was actually directed to both the government, both the school, like anybody that like, it could reach out to. It was just a video that we're making, like let it reach out to people because at this point, we don't know where the help can help, where the help will come from. So we're just reaching out to every single person, be it the Ukrainian government, be it the school authorities, be it the Nigerian government, be it even the EU or the UN, we don't know. So like it was targeted to like vast bodies. Let's just like let's just get out of here. And also, um, the thing is, people have tried leaving the city. And I kid you not, I have a group mate of mine, a friend of mine, a very close friend of mine. She left the city yesterday and she went out successfully. Some students left, they went out successfully. Some students left, but they told them to come back. So the school now is saying, like, we should not head out, it's dangerous and all. Yeah, we know it's risky, but at the same time, students are leaving and they're not facing difficulties. Why? Because they are foreigners. Uh, so Daniel, like, quickly, <laughs> pardon me, who told them to come back? Now, most of them that came back, there were two different stories. Some said they met, like, the Russian, Russian troops who told them to come back. Another, some others said they said it was the Ukrainian soldiers that told them to head back. So me personally, I haven't like made the trip out, but some of my friends, from my friends that I had, some said it was Russian troops that told them to head back. Some say it was the Ukrainian army, like Ukrainian troops that told them to head back. So at this point, it's, should I say it's the two parties, like it's the two countries. Daniel, just know. before I flip this to my colleague in, in Abuja, mm -hmm. last I heard from, from one of the students there, you were meant to be evacuated by 9 a.m. today. I hear there's been some sort of yes. green light. Uh, are you aware of that? Does that look like that will still happen? How many hours away are you from 9 a.m. right now? Um, personally, I'm 16 minutes away. Sorry, um, 18 minutes, sorry. 18 minutes away from 9 a.m. right now in Ukraine. And at the moment, it's not happening. So we were told, we were told that like there was a safe green corridor by 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. That's what we were told. So everybody was told to pack up and prepare. I myself, I was ready. Then early hours of this morning, we were told that they didn't reach an agreement with the Russian troops or like the Russian military. They didn't like um, they didn't agree to honor the ceasefire. So the evacuation has been cancelled. <clears throat> At the moment, it's cancelled. So. Right now, it's just everybody trying to find their way out of here. The evacuation has been cancelled. From what I've seen so far, from the information received this morning, the evacuation has been cancelled. It's not happening. And we don't know when next such like opportunity will come up again. So yeah, has been cancelled. <clears throat> Well, we're going to ask you, we're going to encourage you to keep hope alive. And I know that that's difficult to do when you continue to see that it would seem that uh, help is not coming as quickly as you had thought it was going to come. Uh, but you must also realize that it's a war and that, you know, things are, and can easily change at any point in time. So some students got out safely, uh, they dared it, and they got out safely. Some other students might not be so lucky because of the changing circumstances of the situation. So as much as possible, please stay where the authorities, the school authorities say you should stay. Uh, at least now there, there is an awareness uh, the Nigerian authorities are aware that students are stranded in Sumi and they're still trying to make that arrangement to see how they can arrange a safe corridor. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, how, what is the source of information? Are they keeping constantly in touch with you? Oh, yeah, the school actually created an international group so for every single person in the school. So it's a telegram group. So we're all there, so they keep us updated both on like the evacuation plans and also maybe like if there's going to be an airstrike or something. So on the Telegram group, we've been updated like daily on their plans and their movements and everything that would occur in the coming, like everything that they're planning on in the coming days. So yeah, we've been updated by the school. Of, as of recent, we've been updated by the school. Yeah. 
What about the what about the authorities? That's Nigerian government authorities. Are, are they able to reach you directly? Okay, Not yeah, just you. Um, I mean, yeah. you and of yeah. course a host of other yeah. students who are stranded in Sumi. Um, yeah, I think they are because um, there are some groups I'm on. So I think some people in those groups, they're in other groups that maybe they have like one or two um, Nigerian authorities in those groups. So, so they, they bring information to us too. So I think, yeah, they are reaching out to us like via other students who are in other groups too. Other like maybe WhatsApp group, Telegram groups or something. Yeah, they are keeping us updated. So Nigerian have you people been students. able to form... Have you been able to form a group in such a way, I mean, a connected group in such a way that if, for instance, there is news that there is an evacuation, they finally be able to secure that safe corridor. All of you can leave almost at the same time without anyone being left behind. Yes, yes. The school already made a general, like every single foreign student in Sumi State University, I think we're all in that particular group. Then aside from us being in that particular group, there are other groups that... So let's say, for example, now I get the information from that Sumi State University group. I can now share it in the other groups I'm in. So just in case students who are not in that Sumi State University group, they see this message on time. So I'm personally, I'm on like four or five Telegram groups. And those four or five Telegram groups, at the same time, the inform like any information drops, someone in those groups sends them to the same, to like to other groups to immediately. So I can see like the same message from maybe the first group I'm in in the other four groups at the same time. So at this point, everybody is like, like they are updating everybody back to back. So if you're not in one group, you must be in the second group, definitely. If you're not in the second group, you must have a friend who is in the second group who will keep you updated. So yeah, we're all in Telegram groups regarding the evacuation. Okay, so tell us about, you know, the current situation of things. And I know that anxiety will be one of the things that you might have, I mean, especially when the sirens go off and when you have to go into the bunkers. But generally, uh, 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 would you say that your fellow Nigerians there, are they calm or they are so anxious? Are you able to sleep, for instance? Personally, uh, um, okay, personally speaking for myself, I'm actually like the calm type. So like, even if I'm under this situation, like my dad, I even spoke to my dad, so he like calmed me down and all. But if I'm speaking for, that's me speaking for myself. But if I'm speaking for the Nigerian students here, they're not calm. Like, I can feel the tension. They're all anxious. And I won't blame them. Because um, personally, I have an instance. Was it not, um, I think two days ago, two days ago or three days ago, there were five bomb shellings before 10 a.m. in my city here. And one of them, I personally heard it. So that kind of thing, it has raised, it has like increased the anxiety in the students here. So it's even hard to even calm them down. I won't blame them. Because with each day passing, like we hear the news of the ceasefire and all, but still we're still waking up to bomb shellings. So it's getting scary for them and also, personally speaking for the Nigerian students here, everyone is like, everybody is anxious. We just want to just leave. Like everybody just wants to just get out of here as quick as possible. Because it's getting scary every day. Because you don't know, okay, today now you're waking up with bomb shellings. Tomorrow, what if, God forbid, it's your building that, get, that gets hit. So it's getting scary. So day by day, we don't even know what to expect. So there's anxiety, there's fear. There's even, should I even say anger? Because like, you know, you know that moment when you've tried everything and it just seems like nothing is working. So you're just angry, like what's happening? Like, as per what's happening? So yeah, so I would say anxiety, fear, and anxiety, fear, everything is just, I would say that's like the mood at the moment now. And it's totally understandable, Daniel, totally understandable. We will just urge, you know, to know, to let you know that you are in our prayers, you and your fellow Nigerian students are in our prayers, and we'll continue to do all that we can to get your message out there until you are safely out. Uh, but in the meantime, what are comforts, what are creature comforts like? Are you able to, what's the food supply like? I know that you had expressed earlier fears that, you know, even the authorities could soon run out. But in the meantime, if you were to look at what you currently have and may, maybe perhaps access to be able to get more, how much longer would you say that the food supply you have uh, can, can last you for? Uh, personally, the food supply I have, I would say if I'm going to like, try and minimize or minimize what I have, it should take me for maybe two weeks max or three weeks. Because even to head out to the stores, like due to the power outage, like I said, like due to the power outage, some stores didn't open up. 
and some stores are completely shut. So like the stores are being shut and you don't even know where to get your next food from. So from but why uh, why I'm able to have some food supply that can last me for like maybe the next two or three weeks is because like I when it started I went and I did like I did a mass you know buying of groceries so that's why I was being able to you know secure something and the things I have even for them to last me for those two three weeks I have to really mice like reduce the way I eat you know watch the way I eat I have to like proportion it. So sometimes, like, there was a day I went throughout that day without even eating food. All I was just eating was just biscuit and drinking water. Like, at the point, you won't even feel, like, the hunger may not even be there again. So that's another reason why the food may even last, because the hunger, you may not even feel the hunger again. So personally, for me, I would say, like, my own food stuff, maybe two weeks or three weeks max, even the three weeks is still under probability. Under probability. And I feel, and I know, I not even I feel, I know there are people out here who may even have less. So. Well, I believe that a sense of community will certainly prevail in that respect. But how is it? I know it's still winter in uh, Ukraine right now. So how are you coping with the temperatures? I, I can see that there's electricity where you are. Is the heating yeah. still okay? Yeah, the heating system is working. Yeah, the heating system is working. Well, you know, some of us in the hostels, we have to buy our own personal heaters. So even with the heating system, we still have to buy our own personal heaters. Because in Ukraine here, yeah, like, the cold is really... It's really severe. Like sometimes it can get to minus 25 degrees Celsius. So, and it's winter time and there's snow everywhere. Like literally it's white everywhere because snow is everywhere and all. So it's even like, it's very cold. So the, yeah, the heating system is working quite well. Yeah. But also we also need like personal heaters in our room just to just make us very warm because we're not used to such cold. Minus 25 degrees Celsius, it's very cold. So yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the, the so Daniel, we're going to ask you to 